Each week, as part of the new format here on the weekly show, one of the team will pick out something of interest that they've either watched, read or listened to that week in the world of Celtic media that they then recommend to our listeners. Brad, you've got enough on your plate as your debut show, so we're going to give you a pass for this one. Uh, but again, James has provided something for this week. So James, what have you got? Most people, or a lot of people have seen, uh, there's a wee clip of Ange with the Socceroos and he absolutely blows his stack. Um, and it's something you don't see from him so that, that kind of caught the attention so it's an interview it's only about five six minutes long it's on 10 sport and it's on on youtube so you can get it for free and it's basically the players that Ange had under him i think they're all soccerers actually what did they think of him and you know what what really happened behind the scenes so that's why you got that Ange banging the wall and, and swearing and all these things so you get some real names you know in terms of soccerers and, and i'll just give you a, kind of some highlights so Tim Cahill, um, best movie more, more he's ever seen. Robbie Cruz gets the most out of you. Uh, Jack Snurvin, a boss that never lets you get comfy. Mm. So, Juranovic wanted the off after winning the league. Comfy? Miles <laughs> um, uh, Yednak, he, he felt the belief that the team got from Ange you know, transformed them as players. He believed in them so much. So, a brilliant comment from Ange himself said... Uh, I'm the best motivator there's ever been. <laughs> Is it? Be brave and I'll back you a thousand percent. Yeah. So see, you know, a lot of players we've been given a hard time to for you know trying passes and things like that. We we do talk about us being educated as Celtic fans under range that you know be brave. It's it's only when you saw against Wraith Rovers he went bananas when they were passing the ball back because he wanted them to to go forward. So a lot of stuff that you guys these guys are talking about, we are seeing it. You know, we can we count range now. Um, his kind of style out of possession. The team out of position expends more energy, we know that, but it's exactly how Ange plays. They'll be more tired than you, uh, so take advantage of that. This way this and got to be a reaction. Zero time for laziness. He sees anything like it. Um, last couple of guys, Aaron Moy, just an unshakable belief. You can feel it from him. Mm-hmm. You know? And so These are all the comments these players are making about Ange, yeah? Yeah, exactly that. Mark Milligan, you seldom feel the full force from him because he's, he's so kind of controlled and organised so when he does blow his stack you know you pay attention Yeah. so just a really really enjoyable five six minutes um, and just another wee insight into the, the man that is Ange yeah and I think there's a couple of others with the Celtic links so Aaron Boy you mentioned Jackson Irvin and Tom Rodgers is also featured in the video that's the interesting point about it Bridal it's Ange isn't a typical rant and raving kind of manager um, he has very measured very um, in control covers all the bases but it's good to know that he's got that in the locker sometimes when you need to play that card as a manager, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And he's, he's, we've actually seen it at Celtic Park, I think, a couple of times where I think the centre half, I think Welsh and Jens were passing the ball and pass sideways, and he just <laughs> <laughs> from nowhere, just <laughs> absolutely at a full, like a full stadium. I mean, yeah. absolutely wild. Um, so I was, I, yeah, I, I, watching that, that, uh, that video was, it wasn't a surprise really. Um, and, Again, it's great to see. I love stuff like that. The the kind of insight that you wouldn't normally get. You know, the Netflix series. I'd love a Netflix series around but I can't just sell it. But um, maybe they should do it. But uh, no for it. I it's oh, I love it, man. Love it. But even just his, his message isn't overly complex. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not. It's, it's we look at it and think that it might be the way we play, but it's not. It's just work hard, like earn the right to play, and when you've got the ball, don't be scared. To go forward with it, be brave. I used to always say the bravest man in the park used to think like oh, a guy would fly a two footed challenge. It's not. It's the guy that will take it when you're one 0 down with ten minutes to go. Take the ball, yeah. Yeah, take the ball, do something, try something. And guys like Jota are flying with it. I mean, other players, Hatati taking the ball against Real Madrid in the middle of the park when you're almost certainly nervous as anything, turning their players and have volleys across the pitch and stuff. Um, and as, when it comes off, it looks fantastic for us as fans. Um, and that then, we then support them and want them to keep doing that. So the, the more they do that and the more he makes them do that, then the product itself will continue to get better. That's exactly like You're only going to get better at anything by just repeated practice of it. And, and I think that's the thing, James. And gives the players the confidence and almost the permission to try these things. So you see that's why I'm going to go back to it slightly that's why I think somebody like Mikey Johnson could thrive under Ange because wingers make mistakes right maybe more so than anyone else in terms of you're going to try and take your man on 
I don't know, a dozen times in a game, you might only get by him three or four. That's just part of it. But when you do get by him, you're in. You're in. And there's a good chance you're going to get something. And I think all these players at Celtic, starting with your goalie and your centre-halves, they've been given the the permission, you know, the, the trust, the belief to go and do that. And if it doesn't work, and carries the can. And it, and it's it's how Joe Hart, you know, articulated it when he came out and made Absolutely. the mistake against Bayer Lever. Uh, Leipzig, sorry. Leipzig yeah. away. Made a real mess of it. But he basically came out and said, listen, this is what the boss wants and this is how we do it. And that's what you're going to see. You're going to see guys like Rio Hattati and Matt O'Reilly and Jotas and, and all these guys. They're just going to improve and that's part of it. And we do need to be patient as fans. But I think the fans have bought into it as well. Compare Ange and his backing for Hart versus Van Bronckhurst and how he treated John McLaughlin. You know, just threw him under the bus. And Gerard throwing players under the bus week in, week out, whether it's for Rangers or Villa, whoever. You need to know you're backed by your boss at any walk in life. You know, it's, it's not just a football thing. We were at a QA and a last year and the guy asked the question, he said, Ange, can you stop with the players with the plane at the back because it's, it's, it's killing me, I'm going to have a heart attack. And he said, that's how I play my football. He said, it will cost us, we'll come a cropper. He said, when it does happen, it's on me. And that's the message that Joe Hart's got. And you can see that when some Celtic fans thought Hart was blasé. He's not. He's just and he's on message with how Ange plays football. It's the only way for me. Yes, whether it's Joe Hart or Jota or Juranovic, they're all disciples of Ange. And I think if you're not, you know, we've mentioned flippantly dictatorships earlier, earlier on in the piece. It wasn't being flippant. Uh, yeah, well, it's not, um, it's not a dictatorship, but it's how Ange does things. And if you're on board... Get on board, and if you're not, there's plenty of other clubs out there for you. But as always, it's a it's great to get just a bit more insight into Ange. We've obviously been spoiled by the year and a half we've had of him so far at Celtic, but it's always great to see other bits of of the the journey that's made him who he is. So as always, we'll link to the interview in the show notes for anyone that wants to check it out. But with all things Ange, it's always a very interesting watch. James, as mentioned, the players are now on a bit of a break after an intense start to the season, and we now face a few weeks without competitive Celtic action. How are you feeling in general about things at the moment? Celtic wise or just life is this a kind of how are you is that not right <laughs> therapy, how are you within yourself <laughs> well, we, can, we can take that off here but what about the Celtic stuff uh, it's it's all going well of course you know it's been, it's been a great start to the season and I include Champions League in that because we've grown a lot as a team from that um, that's the first time I've properly reviewed the squad you know to, to haven't jotted that down today so that's that's encouraging in, in itself um, and there's a, there's a long way to go for this team so Things changing across the road is probably, you know, keeping things as they are would have been perfect for us. Um, I don't, and I won't call leagues early, you know, so it's just getting knuckled back down once the, the proper football starts. Yeah, I think, as I say, the players have got the week off and I think they're due to face Wren on yeah, the this, yeah. 9th of December, it- possibly behind closed doors, but they'll just keep ticking along. I think seven days is fine. You know, that's that's good. They, they, they've earned that break and, Definitely. and, and they'll enjoy that. But Ange hasn't given them too much time off. He's, he himself, I think, is going to visit family in Melbourne as his chat. But then I'll be back to it and I'll be back to the He's hard work. He's doing a couple of speaking dates. Is he? Yep. Going the rounds. A couple of um, hydro type places. Is he? Yeah. He's a busy man, isn't he? Yep. Um, Brido, from your own point of view, listen, a dream debut, first of all, and, and thanks for joining us on the show. How did you enjoy it? And what's your general take on all things Celtic just now? I've been thinking about that mystery Celtic <laughs> since <laughs> he came up with it. Uh, no, I've enjoyed it a lot, lads. So thanks for having me. Uh, Celtic wise, yeah, I think it's the message from the manager basically just we, we just don't stop and just keep moving forward in the small things, you know, and that's game to game, player to player. But in the big things behind the scenes, and we've got a it looks like we're getting a Japanese centre half coming in in January. He's not scared to sign people in January. We know that because he's done it. I've heard four. Really? I mean, so we'll wait and see what happens, but. And when they come in, there might be other people going out. So, um, you know, so as as how he's conducting himself and how he's, how he's running the club for, for us, it's becoming very obvious when we look at things like that regarding the squad. So we're in a healthy spot, as long as nobody comes back with injuries and things like that. Yeah, just keep it going. Great stuff. And thanks for joining us, Brido and James. Thanks as always.